Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley, and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, we're talking about trellising. Now, we're not going to talk about the obvious things that people talk about when it comes to trellising. We're actually specifically going to look at different studies that have been done to determine if trellising is worth the money, meaning we're looking at studies that have been performed on market garden specific um, situations, people who are basically trying to do this for a living, sell that vegetables for a living and whether or not these studies showed a value cost wise to actually trellising. So if you like the sounds of that be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you trellis. I would be very interested um, to actually know what the results of this are. At the end of the video I'm going to talk about what I have trellised, what I haven't trellised and what I'm just starting to trellis now and some of the actual benefits I've seen personally in my garden. But Regardless, let's get into it. So I think one of the most obvious reasons to actually trellis would be support. Support allows that plant to take some level of wind or storm activity, whether it be heavy rains or, you know, dogs, kids, that sort of thing. So trellising in that sense is a very obvious reason to actually provide the support. The second reason, and one of the reasons that I've actually decided to start trellising in some different areas of my yard is sunlight. Now you're probably thinking, well, is it because it actually spreads the plant out more what specific about sunlight and this is going to be very specific to your area so if you have a small area and you want to grow something large like a larger vine actually using the side of a a building will help with that, help provide the sunlight that that plant needs. In my case, I'm using it in an area of my garden that would typically be really, really shaded. So this area right here, where I can't grow anything really inside of the bed, I deal with a little bit of legginess in the beginning of the year, but once the heat and the sun picks up, it shoots upwards. And now I'm able to receive several more hours of sunlight than I would if it was on the ground. And this is because there was a building behind me there's my deck in my house there's a large tree and shed on this side and really the only place the sunlight can come in is this direction so being able to lift the plant up off the ground and provide that sunlight is huge this area I was not able to grow anything I still really can't grow anything other than these mining plants the third reason is ease of pruning now we typically will think of this when it comes more so to tomatoes not so much to cucumbers or squash but you can actually prune cucumbers and squash as well. Now the reason for this is because we get a really good visual of where the main stem is and any offshoot activity that is off of that main stem so it allows us to prune correctly and not make any mistakes like taking off our apical meristem which is just a really fancy word for saying the leading edge of the actual plant itself. So fruit, this one again pretty obvious but it does and has been shown to reduce rot and the rot is you know specific to different forms of bacteria or maybe fungal activity in the actual soil. It also allows for proper airflow around the fruit which again will help prevent against rot. But one thing that was actually shown in a number of the studies I looked at when we're looking at marketability of the actual fruit was that folks who trellised on a large scale had less malformations in their fruit. And the one study in particular was actually cucumbers that I was looking at. So the cucumbers that were grown on trellises were worth more in the market because they had that really special look to them that the look that everyone wants and it's funny that humans are like this but if we see a cucumber that maybe grew on the soil and kind of has the scoop or you know skinny at the top and fat at the bottom like the water wasn't dispersed properly gravity that sort of thing that is, it downgrades the market value of that fruit. So if you're looking for those perfect looking cucumbers, trellising may be a great option in this case. So the other thing is disease prevention, pest and disease. So a lot of our issues come from the soil and I may be slightly biased to this, obviously as a soil scientist, but regardless, the soil is where a lot of things live in overwinter, whether it be fungal or bacterial 
or pest wise. And if we can actually get those leaves up off the ground, we can help mitigate that a little bit easier through airflow and not having direct contact with that soil. Now it works some of the time, not all the time. I do have some powdery mildew on these plants here, or these leaves here behind me, but I literally just got it and I have maybe a week, week and a half before first frost. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to compost it. I'm not going to treat it either. But if you want to learn more of that, watch my powdery mildew video. But I mean, for the size of this vine, you can see where the benefits are coming from. Now, one thing I will say is with these larger sized vines, such as spaghetti squash or pumpkins or butternuts, anything like that, they will shoot out tillers. So tiller roots are essentially roots that are on the stem that will shoot into the ground to help capture extra moisture. So if you are wanting to grow a prize winning sized spaghetti squash or pumpkin, I wouldn't trellis because you are going to limit the amount of water and nutrient that can be uptaken. But if you're just going for the small size stuff, if you're just going for regular sized cucumbers, regular sized spaghetti squash or butternut, whatever the case is, then for sure or trellis because those tiller roots are not going to affect much. However, if we're going for the big guys, you may want to consider the tiller roots. They help with stabilization. There is a little bit of nutrient capture and a little bit of water capture that happens. Nothing, you know, too intense is what the main root system does, but it is something to note. So one, the one study, some of the studies I looked at, looked at the weight of the fruit and if the volume or the weight of the fruit changed when something was trellised. And like I said, it did ultimately affect the afterweight of plants that did have the the tillers on them so the giant pumpkins and that sort of thing obviously it doesn't have the same support for a large size fruit such as that however even on the cucumbers or the smaller fruits that were produced there was not much weight increase or volume increase whatsoever and so because of that the only real money um, grabber in the entire study was the view or the, the shape of the actual fruit itself. A number of the studies basically said that because of the cost of trellising and the and how much work had to be put into it, a trellising on a market garden standpoint wasn't worth anyone's time. But if you have one or two plants, it may be worth your your time especially if you want you know your pickles to fit into your jar properly and you don't want the, the curled or the scooped ones and I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about my grandma hates those ones so she does trellis um, I don't really it doesn't bug me at all I just will use those for relish or whatever the case is so because of that I'm not as sensitive to them but regardless that is how you prevent those those malformed fruits so in the name of the algorithm which does not like long videos I will do a separate video on my trellising systems what has worked what's not working and that sort of thing because I want to try to keep these videos under 15 minutes long just because that's what YouTube likes. So if you guys want to see that next video, be sure to hit that notification bell so you do not miss that update. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. I'm literally getting ready to film right now. And my dogs are just, hold on, just give me a second. Oh my God. They dug a hole and it's cold. It's like 40 degrees Celsius outside. So they're just loving that right now. There's literally dust coming out. Good old China dig. Oh, we got a two, two step dig now. <laughs>